You have all been chosen for the starring role as Santa Claus. Damn it! It's Christmas time! What do you want? Well, what do you want? What are you doing? When it came to holiday spirit... Look who's here, it's Santa. I'm on my lunch break, okay? Willie's never had it. It's not real. Well, it was real. I got sick and all the hair fell out. How'd you get sick? I loved a woman that wasn't clean. Mrs. Santa? No, it was her sister. Oh, no. But he's gonna get it. You're that kid. Where's your sleigh? It's in the shop. Where are the reindeer? I stable them. Where's the stable? Next to the shop. How do they sleep? Are you messing with me? There's something about the guy that makes me uneasy. Maybe there's something I could fire him for. A man is a sexual being. Yeah. Now, a hopeless kid. Wedgie. And a Santa nobody liked. Oh. Are teaching each other a lesson. Is that your underwear? Part of it. Where's the rest of it? Actually, I don't want to know. On November 21st, put your dukes up. You gotta learn to stand up for yourself. Oh, no. Scream at him. Ah! Gee. He is pathetic. Scream! Be loud! Ah! You don't hit enough. What's wrong with you? It's just a kid. I told you I didn't want to do this. Huh? Good. This holiday season, the naughtiest guy in town just might discover he's a really sweet kid isn't he yeah i guess so how to be nice good night santa good night mrs santa's sister santa! billy bob thornton so do you like kids what do you think i'm some kind of pervert or something i just mean because you're santa claus huh. bernie mac get him out of here what do you mean get him out of here i'm a dwarf so unless you got a fork little panic maybe you should lend a hand huh Got some lip on you, Mitchell? Yeah? Well, these lips were on your wife last night. Tony Cox. Bad Santa. I beat up some kids today. It was for a purpose. Made me feel good about myself. You need many years of therapy. Hey, guys. It's Chris. And I'm Jack. And we watched a movie. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> it has been a minute. <laughs> Just in time for the holidays. Yeah, the, the perfect holiday movie. Oh, we got a special treat for you. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, this... what, what did we watch, Chris? <laughs> God, yeah. Uh, we, watched, uh, we watched Bad Santa from 2003. The greatest Christmas movie of all time. I know I usually give like a synopsis before we dive in, but I don't... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of in the name. Yeah, it's basically... Santa Claus, played by Billy Bob Thornton, is, he's a mall Santa Claus, and he's the biggest piece of shit of all time. <laughs> he is. <laughs> There's no one more degenerate than he is. <laughs> fictional or non-fictional. <laughs> From his constant drinking, to pissing himself, to having sex with big women <laughs> at the mall so the manager can hear making sure they won't poop right for a week <laughs> his words the three b's but we'll get to that <laughs> oh god oh god yeah um so yeah the movie opens up with them you know at a mall or whatever it's uh billy bob thor and bad santa and his main man uh this uh little person uh, named Nick it's Tony Cox. Tony Cox. Yep. And they playing are playing Marcus. Playing Marcus. Yeah. The elf. The elf. <laughs> and you know they're doing their thing or whatever. You know, but you know, Bad Santa. He's a uh, he's hungover or drunk or he's he, drinking. He's on the little chair that Santa sits on. <laughs> exactly. And he's got to pee. So eventually he just. Pees himself. Yeah, he just pisses his pants. This is like the first five minutes of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Been cursing at kids the whole time. And luckily this scene uh, doesn't last too long. The... <laughs> <laughs> the store closes for the day. And as a large... What's that? What are they doing? Oh, they're robbing the mall that <laughs> they're playing Santa Claus at. <laughs> 
You have Tony Cox is dressed up as a little snowman and then does this whole Mission Impossible thing of rushing to the security box to turn it off before the alarm gets set. And they go to work. Tony Cox grabbing random stuff from the store. For, for his girlfriend. For his girlfriend. And Billy Bob Thornton uh, is the ace safe cracker. So he's in there breaking into the safe. Of course. <laughs> That's the only reason. He's got he... his, all of his tools and he's got his drill. and He's a savant, Jack. That's why he can be such an asshole. <laughs> he has a skill others do not have. Exactly. You know, Mark Zuckerberg, <laughs> Steve Jobs, <laughs> Willie. <laughs> <laughs> Willie, played by Billy Bob Thornton, as Bad Santa. Savants can be <laughs> the worst people. All eccentric. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, and then you know, after a successful job, they grab their stuff, throw it into the van. The getaway driver is uh, Tony Cox's... A wife, I guess. She's his wife. Wife, girlfriend, whatever. Whatever. Um, and they head out of there. And, you know, <laughs> Billy Bob, he retires to a place only Billy Bob could in this movie. Where all degenerates go. Florida. <laughs> <laughs> he spends 11 months just drinking constantly, <laughs> sitting at the beach watching women play volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> Wakes up one day, pissed at his alarm, chucks it at a wall, throws a bunch of bottles at it, and then drinks a beer with a cigarette in it. Kind of reminded me of that scene from Groundhog Day, but way worse. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's an homage. Maybe. Which one came first? <laughs> Groundhog, Groundhog Day, Day definitely yes. came first. <laughs> But luckily, again, the scene is cut by uh, Tony Cox calling Willie and being like, uh, it's time. <laughs> so he heads off to Arizona. Where the rest of the degenerates go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Dry Florida. <laughs> Why do people live in the desert, Jack? This doesn't make any sense. Damn it, I don't get this. There's no water. <laughs> There's no water. But Jack, what if we get a pipe to the Great Lakes and we funnel water to the desert? <laughs> Why would we do that? It doesn't make any sense. If you li- live in Arizona and you listen to... Oh, God, I think, I think one of my coworkers actually lives in Arizona. Well, <laughs> can't win them all. Uh, forget about it. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. They'll get over it. Exactly. Like not having water. Or, you know, not liking Lair of the White Worm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Forever we'll miss that fan. <laughs> Our biggest fan. <laughs> listen to everything, and after that, listen to nothing. <laughs> oh, God. But, yeah, so they're back at it, and, you know, as they're walking in or whatever, <laughs> Willie is, you know, a piece of shit, and Tony Cox is trying to get him to keep his shit together, but the second they walk into the mall, they run into the manager... <laughs> what what does he say to well well first of all willie is smoking his cigarette inside this mall and he's just staring at this woman walking away <laughs> and like the sound completely drowns out and the manager was talking about like you know their work performance or whatever and willie's turns to him and he's like performance like sexual <laughs> i think there's something wrong with my fuck stick <laughs> Tony Cox immediately tries to de-escalate the situation. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's funny. He's making a joke. <laughs> and the manager, being the biggest pussy ever, uh, decides to head over to uh, the security guard's office and... We'll call him Bernie Mac. <laughs> <laughs> and he warns him because Billy Bob said, uh, fuck stick. I love these scenes of the manager and Bernie Mac just talking to each other. <laughs> well, There's just these quick cuts between them of, like, the manager just constantly being like, yeah, <laughs> it's completely <laughs> defeated every conversation. And there's, like, a clear point in each conversation where the conversation's over and Bernie Mac's just waiting for him to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Bernie Mac is always doing something goofy, too. He's like, so... Sucking on oranges or like lemons, like, lemons or like smoking a cigarette. And he's that he's like mixing his laxative, yeah. drinking his water and <laughs> sipping it and like scowling. I know this happens ahead in time, but 
I can't place when this scene happens, and I'm remembering it now. I love... <laughs> I love when Bernie Mac stops the kid in the video game store. <laughs> the kid from Soul Plane? The kid from Soul Plane. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. We will not be doing Soul Plane. But, uh, Never. Like, no. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the kid's, like, still in the game, and Bernie Mac, like, pulls it out of his pants or whatever and calls him, like, a, de- a degenerate and says, this whole generation's going down the tube. Then begins to rob the kid and steals his MP3 player that his grandmother gave him. And gives him a life lesson and shoves him out of the store. Could only be Bernie Mac. Only Bernie Mac could pull that off. Rip Bernie Mac. And honestly, dude. <laughs> it takes a special kind of comedian to pull off harassing a kid, giving him a life lesson, and then robbing him. <laughs> I bet Chappelle could do it. <laughs> Not without laughing at his own joke. That is true. <laughs> It would have to end with, I'm so funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But, yeah, so, again, they get to work and everything, and Santa Claus goes through all these different kids. I think, did the one kid that sneezed, like, chocolate in his face, that happened at the first store? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, makes sense. Well, no, that that happened after they you go to Arizona. Gotcha. All right. He, he's, like, one of the first kids before he meets Thurman Merman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And before that, Billy Bob is passed out beside, behind Santa's, like, chair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But, yeah, they, uh... How much can you drink, like, that early in the morning? <laughs> Dude. That's crazy. <laughs> it's one of those things, like, you remember, like, when we were in college, like, you'd be like, oh, yeah, tailgate, games at, like, noon, let's start drinking at eight, but, like, hit how he's drinking, that's, oh, God, like, drinking, like, straight rum or, like vodka out of the like hand oh. it's like what does he do wake up at six o'clock in the morning and immediately starts <laughs> well yes he does do that yes. actually yes he is an alcoholic it's truly astounding um but yeah we meet thurman merman who's this big boy who's pretty simple on his way to the mall he gets harassed by a bunch of skaters who uh, Some skater punks skater punks they, call- <laughs> <laughs> they make fun of his weight and throw a can at his head but he just keeps walking <laughs> Good defense mechanism. <laughs> Just ignore the bullies. Exactly. <laughs> Good for Thurman Merman. Six and stones may break his bones, but words can never hurt him. Until they hurt him. Until they do hurt him. They do hurt him later. Oh, <laughs> uh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, so they go through the kids. Thurman Merman meets Santa Claus. <laughs> Santa shoves He's him asking off. him all these dumbass questions. <laughs> <laughs> that, that'll that be consistent throughout the movie. <laughs> Santa, why, why isn't your beard sticking? I, I was with a dirty woman. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have a beard, but then it fell out. <laughs> Horrendous. Amazing. Any we're, that... in, we're introduced to Thurman Merman. Then we move on to the next scene at the bar where he meets the love interest. What's her name? <laughs> I don't even know if they ever say her name. Sue, apparently, according to Google. <laughs> I'll call her Mrs. Claus's sister. <laughs> Mrs. Claus's sister. <laughs> Keeps feeding him liquor like no one else. Apparently she has a fetish for Santa Claus or something. She's Jewish or something, too. So she, Because she said, like, because she's Jewish, Santa always felt, like, forbidden or oh, something. Oh, yeah, the, the Santa was forbidden fruit yeah. for her growing up. Oh, God. Obviously they bang in the parking lot. <laughs> they do. They... Bang in the parking lot, and then after that, <laughs> Billy Bob Thor gets attacked by this guy who calls him gay or says he's not gay. I am not gay. <laughs> <laughs> and he proceeds to beat up uh, Billy Bob Thor and throws him on a car and stuff. And <laughs> One of my favorite lines. I don't know what like race or nationality that guy was. Mm. He just looked like a black guy to me. But, like, <laughs> he's like. Literally, <laughs> Billy Bob Thorne says this funniest fucking line. He's like, hey, my dad did not find Vietnam for this to happen. It's like... The guy was like South Asian, but like like Indian, not like not Vietnamese. It was... And I think apparently he probably got, I don't know, touched by Santa Claus because he had a real problem with this Santa. But luckily, out of nowhere comes... Thurman Merman. <laughs> to save the day. To save the day. 
And what this means is that Thurman Merman has been watching Santa Claus probably since he left the mall. He definitely saw them bang the man. Yes, he... <laughs> Just in the bushes watching. <laughs> Jack, why is this the second time that's happened in one of these movies we've watched? I don't know. Well, this one wasn't suggested by anyone. Wait, that first one was your movie. This one was mine. <laughs> You're right. Okay, one for one. We're even. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> But yeah, uh, to, to thank Thurman for saving him, Santa, you know, decides to drive him home or whatever, and Thurman continues to just ask these incessant questions about elves and deer and, like, where's his gifts and where's his sleigh and stuff and everything. Why is he driving a car? Yeah. <laughs> My sleigh's in the shop. <laughs> Where are the reindeer? They're stabled. <laughs> and I do love this as... <laughs> As he drops him off and heads into his house, he grabs a club and a ski mask. <laughs> <laughs> well, they drive into like a really nice looking neighborhood. Yeah. He walks in, he's asking them these questions about who lives with them, and it turns out only Grandma lives with them. Mm-hmm. It's like, is Grandma spry? <laughs> <laughs> Thurman Worm walks through the door and asks Grandma if she's spry. She asks if, they, if she can make him some sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, She's the only one here? He's like, yep. It's like, you got off the mask. <laughs> <laughs> Ask about his dad's safe. <laughs> Proceeds to take everything out of the safe and steal his dad's car. <laughs> <laughs> Just the worst person. The absolute worst. Oh, my God. Shows up again to, you know, another day of working at the store. Don't really crawl. What's, uh, what's... Anything important really happen here? This is when he's banging the okay. bigger lady <laughs> in the tall women section. Yep. Um, you know, he Quote, said, you won't be able to shit right for a week. <laughs> <laughs> and the manager sees this and again takes this to Bernie Mac, but explains the entire story for some reason, <laughs> like in detail of what happened. Like, and for some reason, the manager is like, I need to find a reason to fire him. It's like, you found one. <laughs> that happened right there. Like, like, there are probably a million reasons already to fire him. Like, Exactly. This guy He drinks at work. He smokes in the mall. Like, exactly. What is this, 2003? You guarantee you can't smoke in the mall in 2003. I Easily. remember. <laughs> Dude. He's absolutely... There have to be multiple complaints from kids about him cursing. Like, <laughs> Bernie Mac's like, all right, I'll investigate him. <laughs> all right, now I'll get into it. Bernie Mac goes ahead and investigates Willie's apartment, and Willie goes up to the prostitute who's hanging out, <laughs> hanging out there. And he's like, "Hey," and she's like, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, Willie, I'm not in that, any of that freaky stuff. I didn't poop right for a week last time." It's <laughs> like, huh? This has happened before. <laughs> Is this a well-known fact? <laughs> Santa Claus. It's one of those things too, where it's like he's been there for what four days. <laughs> Yeah, what the hell? He needs to just get through this for like, what, 24 days or something? Dude. He's in the clear? Uh, I know how to keep a low profile. Opens up the BMW he yeah, stole. Yeah, the brand new BMW he just stole. Bottles and cans just fall out of the driver's seat. God. Everywhere he goes, there's just a pile of liquor bottles and beer cans and stuff. Dude. <laughs> he's the biggest piece of shit ever but yeah so because bernie max destroying his motel room he has to lay low somewhere else so he decides to go back to merman's <laughs> <laughs> Where he, Mer- j- he just starts living there <laughs> yes and merman proceeds to ask him a crazy amount of questions again about being santa claus and for some reason billy bob is trying his best to answer between a curse every now and then like <laughs> Well, he keeps getting frustrated and then starts being like, what the fuck? Stop fucking with me, kid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so the next part is they're in the cafeteria, and they're like, you know, for some reason, Bad Santa's got a salad. I thought that was the most surprising thing in this movie. It was a bit shocking. Right? Like, he hit me in a salad? What the fuck? Like... Chicken salad with some kind of vinaigrette on it? <laughs> most likely. And, you know, Tony Cox is there with his wife. She's looking through some magazine, and Tony Cox is eating something, a corn dog. And he is, like, laying into him, like, you gotta stop with all this, like, sex nonsense, and, like, you shouldn't be 
crashing at that kid's house and taking advantage of him. Like, you're going to blow our cover. It feels like the movie just repeats itself constantly. <laughs> Where Tony Cox, is basically all he does is be like, Willie, you need to get your life together. Like, you're a piece of shit. I, you're the worst. Like, <laughs> that is it. Well, that's like he says to it in the scenes, like, what do you think? You're like my mother or something? And then, like you said, Tony Cox says the same thing. You said that last night. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even remember, you piece of crap. Like, the worst shit talker. <laughs> He's like, fine, talk about my height. <laughs> talk about something that makes you feel safe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're emotionally crippled. <laughs> he does have some good burns. <laughs> he really does. <laughs> and they decide to dip, and then the lady brings her like son over to meet you know, Santa. And he just yells at them and says, I'm on my fucking break. I'm on a monster. <laughs> Scares this little kid. <laughs> Try to make my life worse, lady. Try. Oh, Jesus Christ. And then after that, I'm pretty sure uh, Bernie Mac goes to visit uh, Thurman's dad. Oh, yeah, in prison. Mm hmm. Because what Thurman said was his dad is off on a mountain or something. Mm hmm. Like, and he won't be back for another year or so, but he's in prison for. Kind of like how your dog goes to a farm or something. Like. Exactly. For like embezzlement or something. Yeah, embezzlement. Yeah, exactly. And, like, Bernie Mac, this scene is, like, 30 seconds. But from it, Bernie Mac gleans that, mm-hmm, Billy Bob Thornton is staying at their house, and he's some sort of criminal. That's all I needed, and leaves. But they... Well, after that, he just completely knows the scam, like... He, somebody, he, he just he's... figures everything out, from he's... being at their apartment once, and... <laughs> 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 Talking to Thurman Merman's dad. Yeah. He figures out the entire plot of them, you know, robbing malls. Mm-hmm. During Christmas time. And then... Is this there's either like a litany of scenes now, but I know that uh, basically right after um, Bernie Mac goes and confronts them. Yeah. Yeah, and he's like, I know you're scam and all that stuff and everything, and he's like, I want fifty uh, percent, and Tony Cox is like thirty three, and he's like fifty percent. <laughs> he's like uh, forty, <laughs> half, <laughs> forty two. <laughs> Half. <laughs> 45. Half. <laughs> 49. <laughs> well, come on, Marcus. What's one point? <laughs> <laughs> so now Bernie Mac is in on the scheme. He's like, I'm not going to get in the way. I don't want to help or anything. I just want uh, 50% and I'll let you let it slide. And I want to look at the merchandise. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's it. Money's one thing. <laughs> he was not going to let anybody get his wife's merchandise. Truly not. <laughs> no. This uh, Tony Cox, he, there's also another scene where he's like painting her toes or something. He, he seems like you know, a, a, a very, uh, what is it, doubt? Not doubting, very... Devout. Devout. There you go. Husband, <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice guy, Tony Cox. He is when he tries to kill Willie, but we'll get to that. Yeah, exactly. That's, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> but, uh, like, their partnership, obviously, you know, isn't the, the strongest thing because, you know, Bernie Mac realizes how terrible Willie is <laughs> as, you know, he's like... Now he has to try to take care of him also, <laughs> like... like <laughs> and it leads to them having, like, a very funny disagreement like Bernie Mac and Tony Cox, like... Bernie Mac's like, I'll, I'm, I'll go try to smooth things over. You will get him out of here. And Tony Cox is like, how? With a forklift? <laughs> <laughs> and Bernie Mac is like, oh, that's like, uh, you like, at, like, pretend to be disabled or something. Like, you need, like, a hand or whatever. Tony Cox is like, pretending? Like, dude. Pretending? This is a matter of physics. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm then, three foot tall. <laughs> They just start laying into each other, but Tony Cox, again, just the king of burns, burns Bernie Mac, ball taps him, and then walks off. It's amazing. This is the second movie we've watched with Tony Cox in it. It is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Always such a solid performance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you people take checks? <laughs> you people. What do you mean, you people? <laughs> Chauffeurs? <laughs> <laughs> Come on.
completely wrong movie. <laughs> Love that movie, though. Good movie. Great movie. Oh, goodness. But, yeah, because Willie's just, like, such a piece of crap or whatever. He uh, goes back to uh, Thurman Merman's and uh, attempts uh, suicide. <laughs> <laughs> He, he's in he's in his dad's car and he has in the in the garage and he has it running and he has like a hose from the exhaust pipe into his window and like he's giving him Thurman Merman instructions like tell the police I've written this note then he notices his eye <laughs> <laughs> like this man is ready to die and sees one bruise on this child <laughs> and then Willie gets up and he goes to the park to beat up the scanner plugs, <laughs> which is a hilarious scene of Billy Bob Thor just beating up, like, teenagers. <laughs> and scaring off middle schoolers, like, this is... <laughs> and then he goes... He, go, he, goes, he goes to work right after, and he's so Marcus about this, he's like, you know, I think I turned a new leaf, you know, I... Earlier, I, I beat up some kids, and it really made me feel good about myself. <laughs> And Tony Cox is like, you need so much therapy. <laughs> like, <laughs> truthfully. Like. <laughs> See, but if Willie had just given him more context, <laughs> he would have understood the situation. <laughs> I went and beat up children. <laughs> well, we've all been there, am I right, Chris? When I was a child... Not when you were an alcoholic? <laughs> <laughs> no, not when I was an alcoholic adult. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. But yeah, and then after that, um, <laughs> Tony Cox calls Bernie Mac out to the middle of the desert, because again, it's Arizona. and Well, they're leaving for work. Oh. Be- you know, the day's over. Mm. And Marcus, you know, has this plan set up where he pretends like his van isn't starting. And Bernie Mac, you know, also helpfully <laughs> uh, jumps jumps the van. <laughs> <laughs> they proceed to murder Bernie Mac while he's in between their cars. His yes. wife, like, drives into him. <laughs> they, they, attempt, they have two attempts before they're successful. Like, they drive into him and smash him a few times. But she's like, couldn't get enough momentum. So then Tony Cox, I think, tries to electrocute him. He tries him. to electrocute him. He, yeah. He puts the jumpers on his ears. <laughs> and it doesn't work. So then Tony Cox, you know, disproving physics, drags Bernie Mac to behind their um, van, puts his head b- behind the wheel, and then his wife proceeds to drive over him. Yikes. <laughs> dark. Very dark. <laughs> It's the one area I didn't kind of see this movie go into. I was like, oh, dang. I actually don't remember him doing that. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. I've seen this movie many times, but I don't think I've watched the version that we watched. <laughs> what? And the version that I've watched many times, they literally just run into him and he dies and the scene's over and they move on. I've never seen them try to electrocute him. I've never seen... <laughs> running over his skull? <laughs> running over his skull. Definitely never seen that. <laughs> The version I've seen has, like, the advent calendar and the tostadas and <laughs> the prayer vigils. This is much more streamlined. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> more streamlined than tostadas? <laughs> more streamlined than tostadas. <laughs> Chris, you want me to fix you some sandwiches? <laughs> <laughs> What's with you in the sandwiches? <laughs> God damn it, what is he? What are you in the fucking sandwiches? <laughs> <laughs> Just randomly, there's a scene where, like, uh... Billy Bob and <laughs> Mrs. Claus's sister are heading into Merman's house, and they see the grandma's like out cold, and they think she's dead. <laughs> and Billy Bob goes to check her heartbeat, and she shocks awake, scares the crap out of them, and is immediately like, "Oh, let me make some sandwiches." <laughs> it's one of the reoccurring jokes is how much they're talking about these sandwiches. <laughs> Do you want some sandwiches? <laughs> I still love the scene of. Uh, Thurman Merman giving Santa his present. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think precedes that scene with Grandma. Yeah. He, he walks in the Thurman Merman walks into the room where Billy Bob Thorne and, and <laughs> Mrs. Santa Claus's sister <laughs> are like about to have sex on the floor and 
Thurman Merman gives him his Christmas present, and it's a wooden pickle. <laughs> and he's like, why is it brown? He's like, it's not brown. It's blood from when I cut my hand. <laughs> This movie's so disjointed. Forgot the scene of him cutting his hand open. And <laughs> Billy Bob Thorne pouring a bunch of vodka on it. <laughs> and then taking a swig right after. <laughs> Sorry, I guess I should have said it would sting. <laughs> Such an asshole. <laughs> oh, God. But, uh, what is it? Based on where we're at, Bernie Mac just got murdered. Um, the plan's ready to go. It's Christmas Eve. All the shoppers and workers are walking out the door. And they're going through with the plan again to rob <laughs> the mall. <laughs> they are... Billy Bob, well, they do the whole, like, Mission Impossible thing yeah. with Marcus again, which was... He gets a remote so he can turn off the cameras and stuff and everything. He goes through the vents. Which I didn't like as much as the first one. <laughs> Personally. Yeah. Perfectly fine. I I don't recall it as well. Um, but uh, what is it? Yeah, so they're, you know, pulling off their last job, and Billy Bob goes to check out the safe, and he's like... It's impossible to crack. And you can just see on Tony Cox's face the fury. <laughs> like, he's like, I've been dealing with your crap for, like, several weeks now, and you're telling me you can't open that safe? <laughs> I can try. You know, montage. Mark is picking out all of his girlfriend's stuff again. And Billy Bob Thornton is doing all these weird things to the safe. And eventually he's like in the back of it with like a stethoscope and is like tapping it on the back. Mm -hmm. And then it just opens randomly. I don't know how safe works. Safes work. I've never broken into one personally. <laughs> <laughs> I've never either. But yeah. yeah but have you attempted? break into a safe sure i don't know don't know don't remember can't say legally <laughs> trying to entrap me <laughs> chris i'm trying to help you Plead <laughs> <laughs> oh. the fifth kids <laughs> oh my god <laughs> don't incriminate yourself <laughs> always plead the fifth watch that uh Chappelle skit um but yeah so but eventually billy bob you know pulls it off opens up the safe and you know marcus starts loading up the money and billy bob remembering that merman all he wanted for christmas was uh elephant goes to grab pink a elephant oh yeah it's a pink elephant he goes to grab it but he forgets what color uh, he has for <laughs> in my mind i'm just like grab both what do you mean you're you're stealing <laughs> not the point, Chris. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's about remembering what the kid wants. <laughs> yes, because you slowly, as degenerate as Billy Bob has been, he has, you know, grown closer to the kid throughout the movie. So he wants to get him a gift. Um, but then, you know, as he's heading back, he runs into uh, Tony Cox, who has a gun on him. <laughs> <laughs> and we both knew this was coming, Willie. <laughs> Every year you get worse and worse. Oh, you're, you're missing it. There's, yeah, there's one more thing. Before that, he's like, I don't think uh, uh, Maldick's going to want this elephant. <laughs> and he's like, Maldick's not going to want anything. And you're like, are you sure? You're pretty sure he wanted like half. And he's like, Maldick's dead. <laughs> so he doesn't want anything. I didn't, I didn't know Maldick was sick. <laughs> <laughs> Willie's still loading. <laughs> But eventually he gets it, and Tony Cox just says I think it. he's just being coy. <laughs> <laughs> he understands. Fair. But yeah, and uh, the funny thing is, Billy Bob's not even like mad or surprised that Tony Cox is trying to kill him. He literally says he's not surprised. <laughs> exactly. He's like, I get that. But it's like, do you really need all that? Like, and he points to like the money and all the crap they're sto they've stolen. It's like, it's Christmas Eve. And it's one of those seconds when it's like, this is like... This is, it almost becomes like a Christmas movie moment. <laughs> yeah, it's like... <laughs> it's like the Grinch's heart growing two sizes. It's like, oh my god. 
Doesn't it grow like five sizes or something? <laughs> it grows. Uh, it grows somewhere between three to five sizes, but I said less because this is still Billy Bob. This is true. <laughs> this is <laughs> he. He's still drunk. He's he's still alive. He things. used smelling salts to wake up for this. <laughs> <laughs> he's still alive. Things. He's just gotten a little nicer to some kid. Um, but and the waitress. <laughs> and and the waitress. Uh, Mrs. Santa Claus's sister, <laughs> who, ah, oh, God, just weird. Um, but yeah, so, and he's about to shoot, uh, Billy Bob, but luckily, <coughs> the police show up. <laughs> Stop! I'm a cop! <laughs> <laughs> Tony Cox jumps onto the merchandise, uh, cart and starts shooting, and then the cops start shooting, and Billy Bob starts running, and the cops are really expressing their right to bear arms, because they... <laughs> They were shooting, like, shotgun caps at, like, Billy Bob while he has no weapon. <laughs> and he successfully escapes to his car. He's a menace to society, though, Chris. <laughs> Have you seen Menace to Society? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Are we doing that, Chris? <laughs> oh, my God. Ugh, right after Boys in the Hood. Uh, well, think about it. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta do fresh, though. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Um, but what was it? Um, yeah, so Billy Bob escapes into the stolen BMW because he still has it. He still has it. <laughs> Somehow gets, evades the police officers <laughs> in their cars. <laughs> <laughs> Drives back to Thurman Merman's house. Yep. Gets out the car to run to the front door and the cops all show up and they start shooting him in the back. <laughs> they gun him down. <laughs> there's these kids on the balcony, <laughs> the neighbor kids are watching Santa Claus being <laughs> shot by the police. <laughs> and the cops are like, put a cork in those kids. <laughs> <laughs> Went from kind of wholesome to no, it's still bad Santa. <laughs> it is so bad Santa. Oh my God. Amazing though. Loved it. <laughs> And, but luckily though, we, uh, the next scene shows, uh, Merman getting a letter and a gift from Willie, who survived the shooting, uh, because they didn't hit any vital organs besides his liver. Back. Which is <laughs> fucked anyway. Exactly. <laughs> Thankfully, because Merman <laughs> gave that letter to the cops. <laughs> this suicide note to the cops. I gotta say, that's actually good writing. Uh, they showed up to stop this robbery. <laughs> <laughs> it means that Billy Bob Thorne's not going to jail. Yeah. <laughs> also because the Arizona police gunned down an unarmed Santa Claus on Christmas Eve. On a suburb. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh god, and somehow the waitress has become Thurman's legal guardian temporarily till his dad gets out. Sure, why not? It's like, okay, whatever. That... She likes living there, whatever. Yeah, sure. Grandma shouldn't be in charge. <laughs> no. It's... <laughs> Grandma is senile. <laughs> Grandma's barely alive. <laughs> All she can do is sleep and make sandwiches. <laughs> Merman has to be paying the bills. <laughs> this is more than just Grandma got ran over by a reindeer. <laughs> Love that movie. That's a classic. Classic. <laughs> Oh God! But yeah, all's well that ends well. And Billy... the the last the last scene of the movie is this, <laughs> it was, uh, is Thurman Merman going out to the front of the house where uh, Santa Claus got shot and he's cleaning the blood <laughs> off the floor. <laughs> and Willie also ends his letter with Yeah, so I'll be getting out of the hospital soon, and Santa's gonna come and visit you and. Have sex with Miss, Mr. Santa Claus's wife's sister. <laughs> ha ha ha. <laughs> uh, sin- <laughs> sincerely, Santa. <laughs> the end. The end. Oh my god. What'd you think, Chris? <laughs> oh my god, dude. This is one of the most degenerate movies I've ever watched. Oh yeah, for sure. It's pretty funny, though. It's, it's <laughs> fucking hilarious. One of my favorite comedy movies. <laughs> It's just so shocking, each of the scenes. <laughs> it's horrifying what you see. <laughs> Who allowed this movie to occur? 
Oh, God, dude. This is... It's raunchy and offensive and shocking and it's fantastic. It's one of those things where it's like, this is a bad movie. Not in, not in its quality. <laughs> not in it its is... quality. <laughs> it's, it's probably bad for you morally it's to bad. watch. <laughs> it's bad for your soul. Like... Oh. It's like super trailer park boys. <laughs> dude, oh, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. This movie bananas it's just bananas one of my favorite comedies one of my favorite christmas movies of all time you see my my christmas movies are just like bad from like a story perspective like you know not not this this is like what chris <laughs> <laughs> well the listeners will just have to wait to see ha ha ha, <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Oh, ho, ho. ho 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 cliffhanger <laughs> Oh, we'll see you in three months for the Easter Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good flirting. <laughs> nice. Billy Bob Thorne knows how to do it. <laughs> exactly. You know? <laughs> I thought she just had daddy issues, but no, it was Santa issues. Oof. Well, you know, these, these ladies have Santa Claus issues a lot, you know what I'm saying? Uh, no. <laughs> I've never seen this before. <laughs> I mean... I have not seen this before, but who knows, maybe, you know? I've only read about it on Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> don't go on Tumblr, kids. <laughs> who am I kidding? Kids don't listen to this. Oh, well. <laughs> Fuck it. Hey, exactly. There are probably a few kids who've... No, no, never mind. So... <laughs> <laughs> Those kids that we beat up earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet, Jack. We don't... <laughs> Have to cut this. <laughs> right, don't. <laughs> don't mention that. <laughs> don't mention that. <laughs> but, uh. What, what would you rate it, Chris? I would rate it. It's one of those days where it's like, it's actually got quality. Um, I'd give it like a seven and a half. Yeah, I'd probably give it like an eight. Yeah. I love this movie. Like, it's just one of those things where it's like, it's a good movie. It's, it's actually so, a good movie. Yeah, right? like, it's easily well written. It's just so degenerate. Like, yeah, if, if you are un... Well, you're gonna be bothered by what you see, mm. regardless, but... If you can look past the degeneracy... <laughs> good movie. If you can walk a mile in another Santa's puke-riddled shoes... <laughs> well, yeah, the... Per, the opening scene is literally him at a bar and then leaving the bar and then puking in the alleyway. Like, yes, <laughs> they tell you what this movie's about <laughs> immediately. Yeah, this isn't something you ever find on ABC Family. Oof, that's where quality content lives, Chris. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> any last remarks? Watch this movie before Christmas is over. <laughs> Yeah, I would recommend you watch Bad Santa. It is, it's a funny watch. I would say it's not a family watch. <laughs> but Unlikely. Yes. The whole family should probably be, like, at least 14 years old. <laughs> yes. You, yes, that is. Now, it's definitely rated R. <laughs> yes. But, you know, that doesn't really mean anything. At home, it's your choice. You're the parent. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, bad movies, weird podcasts to say weird things. They don't destroy kids. It's bad parenting. Word. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a lesson. All right. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, it's good to be back. <laughs> Well, all uh, thanks for listening. As always, I'm Chris. And I'm Jack. And we watch movies. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs>